where it leaves us is my major concern over this is that I look at who's left. And where it was, and I said this weeks ago on this, is that Alonso just had carried with him an aura that I think would have allowed us to all take a big deep breath in what we're doing and what we're coming. And I look at what's left, and it goes back to this thing of when Klopp, when you go for Jurgen Klopp, he's a guy who's exceeded expectations in the Bundesliga with a team that's not expected to win the league and not meant to, you know, it's meant to challenge and be there or thereabouts, but it's telling Dortmund haven't come close, you know, been been that good since mm. Klopp left. Um, Again, Rafa Benitez just breaks down Real Madrid and Barcelona with the, with the third best team, a team that he makes the third best team, and then the best the best team in the Liga. I mean, Depot were there all, all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and and then I look at what's on the table now. And Ruben Amram now is the standout candidate in terms of at least what he's done. But we're talking about a guy who's won one Premier League title. You know, we're not even talking a top five league in in Europe by all by all accounts. He's had some, a, a bit of domestic success. He, he played a lot of games at domestic level in the Portuguese league as well. So he's he's got something going for him. Chris, you've done a lot more on style of play and all that kind of stuff, and he, he feels like he would be a good fit. But it's another that you. He's just got no experience outside of Portugal to speak of. And his his success at Portugal hasn't been... He's not the next Mourinho. He's not going to win a Champions League while he's been there or whatever. And then you're looking at the Zerbi and there's a guy who's had, you know, a reasonably successful one, reasonably successful successful season with Shakhtar. He's done good things, taking lesser lights in Italy and made them a bit competitive in a good style of football, but nothing you'd say immediately translates to, to Liverpool. Thomas Frank's done nothing. Um, and then you, and I'm starting to look around and go, everyone now feels there's a degree of gamble with every manager. Hmm. And that would be even if you were getting Carlo Ancelotti in as Liverpool manager to follow Jürgen Klopp, by the way. But that's where I'm at now. I don't, I'm... I'm wary of stepping into this arena of speculation because I don't think anyone's the right fit. And I'm running the risk of going, I don't think he's good enough or good enough or good enough. And we're probably going to end up one of these guys who is in inverted commas, not good enough. So this is the wilderness we're at right now. If you had to pick. Amarim. Mainly because, and I said this last week on a deep on a deep dive with Josh, I actually thought if you were taking the the the, the tactics that the team plays currently and moving it to Liverpool, then his tactics fit best with Liverpool's more so than Alonso. But you know, when we were talking on the way to the match yesterday, I was sort of saying like, well, there's no guarantee that Alonso uses the tactics he's used at Leverkusen at Liverpool because you make your tactics based on the players that you've got in your squad. Mm-hmm. So, but so. Basing it purely on Alonso's buying sides and Amarim's sporting side, I think his his tactics fit better. I think he's a better manager probably than the others that we're talking about. Nailsman's obviously, uh, I think a, a very very good candidate that the timing of doesn't work for me because yeah. the Euros and all that being in Germany and pre season starting and all that type of stuff. But I like Amarim and I, and I think the the, the one thing that you you have to look at and. You know, again, stuff that I've sort of spoken to people about and, and and read about is that, you know, looking for a manager, according to Ian Graham, is the holy grail of analytics. Mm. It's very difficult to find how much an impact the manager has on a team. Um, but with all the names that we're mentioning, you can look at the manager as having a big impact on the team. Mm. And then, then you get to start down these sort of rabbit holes of, well, is the European experience and all this type of stuff? Well, Sometimes you've got to learn on the job, unfortunately. And I think with the candidates that we've got, would you rather have a, a European experienced manager who's just not very good or a really good manager who doesn't have the European experience? I know where I'd sit. I'd rather the good manager who's, who's you know, unfortunately I don't want them learning on the job, but if they're the best candidates because they're the best managers, you kind of got to go, okay, fine. There's just something to a manager, I think, Dan, who can, you know, because... You've, you've had this all the time. It's what David Moyes suffered with when he when he took the Manchester United job, as he was turning around to a bunch of guys who won absolutely everything and going, right, listen, lads, I know what you're doing, but what I'm saying is, when I had, you know, Phil Jagielka and uh, you know and Leighton Baines and and you know and and and, and, and mm-hmm. Nigel Martin in goal, you know, and we were really scrapping for to- a top half finish with Everton. This is what we did, and it's like Ryan gigs or whatever type people are going like four four two. That's what we did at Manchester United. <laughs> yeah, great. Having someone who can at least call upon 
when I did this. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I've yeah. got a tangible. When I won this, this mm. is how I went about achieving yeah. it. Achieving it is my is, is a, a little bit of a barrier to entry for me. Yeah, I, I know it is. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, and I suppose that's where the personality has to shine through more than ever. And that ability to be a leader and ability to be a manager has to transcend what's gone before. I guess, and uh, f- f- in all accounts, you know, Amarin has that, and what he has done as well, which I'll kind of come back to, is like. He has upset the natural order a little bit in Portugal. They sporting, albeit one of the clubs in Portugal, of course, they weren't necessarily serial winners of that league. I think far from. I think they won it like like the first, years first time in nineteen something. years. So he's got that under yeah. his belt. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I'm okay with it. Do I think it's ideal? No, but I don't think Liverpool live in an ideal world once again. We're not exactly awash with candidates to go. It has to be him. Has to be him. It feels like Amarim is definitely the next best. Is for like that throughout this entire process. It was some drop, by the way, from Alonso to Amarim, but I believe it's some drop again to the the rest of the yeah. candidates I think mean, they're all in a, a pool swilling around somewhere below him so yeah I think you're right I think in an ideal world they would have to look what I've won playing career manager or career, whatever it may be look what I did and the players instantly have that respect you know who he is coming through the door etc etc I think that'd be perfect does he possess that no but does he have the the personality, the character, the charisma, the leadership, the managerial qualities to make that not matter? Quite possibly. I mean, look at Jurgen Klopp. Like his playing career was hardly no. outstanding. Obviously, don't get wrong. What he did as a manager before he got to Liverpool stood him in good enough yeah. stead in that elite category for players to instantly respect him. But at some point at Dortmund and indeed Mainz to a certain extent, he would have had to convince players that what he was saying they had to get behind yeah. because he didn't have the playing career to stack it up. So it's not necessarily. The be all and end all is kind of what I'm trying to it's say. It's easier to do that though at clubs that have is. lower expectations. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. I just want, just lastly, Chloe. Just for, it does for me. This now poses the question of: Are we not? Is it worth revisiting Pep Linders as a conversation? Now, what's he won? But he's been there while. But he has at he least been. Aaron work for Mourinho. Home fucking one loads. Pep Linders to me feels like a stopgap. Waiting for Alonso. Yeah, and that, but that's, that's all it is. And that, but that's a, but that's a conversation I think is is a worthwhile conversation at this point because if you number one choice, Liverpool don't buy centre halves on a number one choice. Centre halves yeah. not available, and God knows how many other times you've got Pep there who gives you that. You know, yeah, and also really he's not going to cost you loads of money you because know, he's you know he's probably still got a contract if we really wanted to to hold him to it or whatever. He's there's a continuity aspect there that he knows what the insides and outs of the football club it does make me think, you know, because again, and do you think, for in your opinion, is he in that same sort of pool that Deserby and Thomas Frank, for example, inhabit? No, he's higher than them because what I'm looking at right now is someone who I can buy into as a manager. That is the most important thing for me right now. Um, and I'm so sorry to say it, but Deserby, there is just something about that man that I just can't. Like if he was on the touchline for Liverpool, and bear in mind if he does, I'm going to have to get behind yeah, him and yeah. probably support him and I will. Mm. But there's just something about him that I just can't get on board with and I cannot pinpoint it at all. Like I physically have thought about this for months and I cannot understand what it is I just don't like it there's just something that I'm not getting on with there like it's I don't the know it might be the hair gel it might be um, with Amarine there's, there's there's a character there that I can buy into there's um, passion, passion there, exactly yeah. that um, there's the fact that you know <sighs> He's done it with a club who was sleeping giants in the likes of Sporting and Liverpool were once there and Jürgen Klopp kind of did that. Um, and there is just something more that I can grasp onto and I can turn around and say, yeah, absolutely, I can get behind that lad. I can buy into what he wants me to do um, as a fan. And I could do that instantly with Jürgen Klopp. What I will say with the, the Pep Linders thing is, uh, once again, Thomas Frank, there's something about it. I do not like it and I do not want it. Pep Linders is above them two for me just because... He is someone who I've been able to buy into alongside Jürgen Klopp. Um, it wouldn't be my answer because I, there's just, like you said, there a stopgap. And to be perfectly honest, he doesn't deserve that. He's got potentially Ajax lining him up here. He deserves to have a go at being a, a manager and having a go at trying to bring them success. And I'm not sure he could do that at Liverpool. He needs, I think it was you mentioned earlier, he's got no backroom staff. His backroom staff are Jürgen's staff who yeah. are all just getting off. Um, and we don't know how he'll, how he'll work on his own. We know how he worked with Jürgen Klopp. He's a much more senior man who's done it before. He, we know what it was like when he had someone who was more superior above him. Um, we don't know what he's like on his own. So yeah, it's it's a tough one to t- to understand. Um, Plus, he's changed, hasn't it, significantly? Before I do the obvious, 
of saying like you know the guy you know Bob Paisley had no managerial experience yeah. mm. and Joe Fagan had no managerial experience and Kenny Dalglish had no managerial experience and were able to come in and continue the ball rolling and there is a little bit and that's what I mean this is an interesting conversation that's going to follow it feels like he's just been completely he's completely bombed out of the running and there must be some reasoning behind that we've heard him say he always said he'd leave when Jürgen left yeah. does he himself feel like he's not ready to take the top job as he we don't know we don't know the truth behind any of this because it felt for years my immediate thought when that Jürgen Klopp video dropped I was walking back to ours trying to fathom it all out with with tears in my eyes and my immediate reaction was cool we'll just give it to, we'll just give it to pep and that'll be and i can i can i could immediately make my peace with that um but the, for that to be instantly taken away it's yeah it's it's, it's just yeah it's mad isn't it because I, I, again I, I, I agree with chloe on this it's like what makes me feel more comforted and my level of comfort is has got nothing to do really ultimately with this because there's smarter people with more data points and all these kind of things going on who know more behind the scenes and the stories it might be that no one likes him behind the scenes and they might not want him he might they might be itching to just have a clean break because you hear loads of stuff about him and Jürgen and, and all that kind of stuff don't you about how they are they can be quite spiky characters or whatever within it I don't know it's, it's pure yeah. speculation at this point it's so it's so unique the Liverpool job isn't it we essentially touched on this earlier on when we talked about how well coached Man City and Arsenal are we need to be well coached of course we're doing tactics and systems and all that sort of stuff are absolutely imperative that's why systematically I think I'm a means of fit as well but we require so much more than that you've got to buy in you've got to understand what it means to manage a football club there has to be that motivational side of things that's not to say other managers don't possess that of course and other clubs don't need that as well but I think we are so unique in what we want and what we demand I mean we want somebody who can come in and motivate the players and also the fans can get behind it just feels very different to me we don't want this sort of run of the mill these brilliant tactics and that's fine I, I'm with you on the Zerbi stuff I've made you know no secret of that whatsoever certainly upstairs there's something intangible with De Zerbi that I can't get behind there's something there's something missing there and I don't think we'd ever gain that connection and listen I'm with you if he does become the manager I'll have to buy into him and I have to get behind him and I'll back him to the hilt of course I will but there's something about the way he goes about his business it doesn't sit right with me and I think on top of that his comments over the weekend about wanting to get out of Brighton doesn't feel right either Klopp's been the opposite of that his communication skills have been wonderful he's always said the right things at the right time I don't think De Zerbi has so managing Liverpool Football Club to sort of round off the point is more than just being a football manager We've seen that in Jürgen Klopp's entire reign and nobody can come in and emulate that. It's nigh on impossible. But somebody has to get close to that for me and at least have similar sort of beliefs and similar sort of ways of going about the business. And not many in this conversation tick those boxes. Unfortunately, that's why Alonso was so perfect. I just think Amarim's the next best by some distance. Yeah. Mm. And and like you said there, Jürgen, what he's done is he's came in and he's felt like, actually, he's from the city of Liverpool. He yeah, could exactly, have been yeah. a scouser. Yeah, in it. Like, it for, every moral everything that he's came out on and he has been proactive on things he's gone out of the way to um make sure that community is um uh, is spoken out for and he's just his proper sound he seems just to just on this though by the way just rafa benitez ended up being a wonderful fit as liverpool manager yeah, yeah, of course but didn't i mean is a guy who's, who very rarely leaves a football club in any sort of positive way i mean fucking valencia there brushed him out of like title winning photos and stuff when he left that club he had mad issues with them he's had loads of stuff along the way he's not a particularly like, loving sort of guy not a huge you know gregarious character like Klopp and whatever but we took him to our hearts i'm sure we can you know people need the opportunity to be exposed to liverpool in order to get a ball. Winner masks yeah, it all. That like, that, that's, the, that's the big thing. I listen. I had real problems with Brendan Rodgers being the Liverpool manager before he was given the Liverpool manager's job. Mm. And in 13, 14, he was the greatest manager yeah. we've had yeah. for twenty odd years. Or but we whatever. weren't like, just putting out a clop over, were we? No, of course, it, and that's yeah. different. And that's why it's interesting for me the Pep line. This stuff is because he's clearly a brilliant football coach. But if you're going to sit here and tell me that you're worried about Amarin because he's only won the fifth best league in Europe, which it is officially one of the top five Head now France, above France think, yeah, yeah it was a couple of years ago they changed yeah. that um, and he's won a league title after 19 years for a side that hadn't done it then I've got concerns over Pep Linders for his one failed attempt at management yeah. you know and, and listen, don't get me wrong I think Pep Linders could be a great manager I really do. I, I don't know how he'd react but I'd have to see that in front of the press week in week out 
But what you've got to go on past successes or failures and stuff when you're looking for a Liverpool manager. And I think Liverpool's setup would be better for him than it is under Jurgen Klopp. Yeah. Because they take they are essentially looking for a head coach now. They're not looking for a football manager. Yeah. But equally, Pet Linders is the coach of the team. Mm. He doesn't yeah. make the big decisions. He coaches what Jürgen asks mm-hmm. him to coach and he has a big part mm-hmm. of how we play and stuff like that. But what happens when you're the man who's making the decisions? That's when it can go wrong. So I think you need to look for managers nowadays or teams, sorry, head coaches who've run it and their decisions are the be all and end all when you're looking for a job of the magnitude of Liverpool Football Club. Can I also just say that like Jürgen Klopp's been the manager of Liverpool for pretty much a third of my life. So like, where you are all sat here talking about Rafa Benitez and all that, I was three or four it's when he won a Champions life, League. Isn't it? Yeah, it's so obvious, yeah. literally, yeah. so like this Unless is actually you know twenty seven all of a sudden. Yeah, no, it's not even a third. But the like, it's yeah. um, but but that's what I mean. Like, I don't, I've not really known yeah. any different. So. When I think about the, <laughs> when I, when I, it wasn't very good for no, a few no, years long. You have a But when I think of like the the things I can grasp onto for the you know this is the longest manager in my career in my career in my life, um, like I'm gonna try and grasp onto the fact of how I felt with a manager who really. I could buy into and that is what I'm going to hold on to. It's just that thing of Pep, Pep Guardiola doesn't look like he's going anywhere anytime soon unless City get absolutely, absolutely shagged <laughs> everywhere by PSR. But well, we'll see. Um, Arteta looks like he's in it for, you know, for a good old run at the moment. And I just wonder whether, this, you know, we're now in that world now because that was my assurance this whole time. Every time a good football club got a new manager, I was like, there's Jürgen Klopp and there's Pep Guardiola yeah, right, and everyone right. else is underneath and now mm-hmm. we're shopping in that pool like like mere mortals. You know, and we're going to have to do this when we have to go and buy Salah's replacement. We're going to have to go and find yeah. the world where the guy who plays on that right-hand side might score loads of goals or might get loads of assists, but he's not going to do both because it's impossible to buy someone based basically because it's such a small margin we're going to have to play Van, replace Van Dijk at some point Trent at some point and, and Allison at some point and we're going to have to deal with, with with just having really really good instead of like best in the history of all time kind of levels 